Hello and welcome to Share Talk. I'm Bonnie Hughes. Our guest today is Eurasia Marning. They have three projects in Russia. One is in production um, with contract mining for uh, PGMs. The second one is going towards final approval for a mining permit. And the third is a tailings project. Here to tell us all about their future plans for the company is Christian Shapolitsky, who is the chairman of Eurasia Mining. Thank you very much for joining us. My pleasure. And I understand that um, you just appointed a new contract miner on your West Kitlam mine, and things are progressing with that project. What are your plans for exploration? Uh, well, the uh, West Kitlam license, which is uh, for uh, 25 years, um, basically uh, we're doing the first full year of production now with the new contractor. And uh, we have reserves uh, already defined to sustain uh, operations using one mining, uh, one mining plant, one wash plant. Uh, but we intend to increase that to three over the coming years in which case we will also be um, extending the reserves by proving up resources which are also present in the license. So it's an integrated program. And so ultimately, I guess the plan is to increase production um, at the mine. That's right, yeah. And so you're in discussion with your partners uh, with regard to progressing that, and would they be responsible for the cost of doing that, or would it be shared? The way, we, the, way the contractor works is that we split the revenue uh, not the profits, but the revenue, 65, 35. So the contractor covers all the capital investment for each of the uh, washing plant operations, and as well as the operating costs in return for 65%, while we, re we retain 35%. And our role on the site is to look after the geology, the reserves, and indeed the final washing stage of the concentrate before it's delivered to the refinery. That's excellent. And so your second project, which is going to be your flagship project once mm -hmm. it's in production, um, which you're targeting around 2020 Q4? Yes, that's right. Uh, the Montetoto project in the Kola Peninsula is uh, a much bigger project. It's 2 million ounces at the moment. And uh, we are currently at the, at the last stages of permitting the mine for development. And uh, we hope to produce 130,000 uh, ounces per annum of PGMs from that project. And I understand that you have a lot of buy credits um, of nickel um, as well that would help with reducing costs. At yeah, the, the product is actually uh, palladium, platinum with copper nickel byproduct. That's uh, and it's a, you know, it's, a, it's a bulk concentrate initially. And so part of the um, financing for construction, um, I understand you have something set up with one of your partners on that, and you're also in discussions with offtake agreements with Glencore and Sino Steel. Yeah, Sino Steel is, is the group which we have agreed an EPC contract, uh, engineering, procurement, and construction contract, as well as financing. And uh, they, have, they, they made a, an initial estimate of $176 million development cost, of which they will finance 85%. So the company is responsible for the 15, the balance of the 15. But within the Sino Steel contract, there is a subcontract back to us of $50 million which is to cover uh, engineering and site preparation, uh, geotechnics and so on, which we believe uh, will ultimately cover the, the, the balance of the costs required to meet the full development cost. And um, so I understand that the, the mining permit has already passed one stage of the government and is in um, final approval stage. When do you expect to have that finally approved? Uh, yeah, the, um, the license um, is actually gone through very many stages, um, but quite quickly. So it was submitted late last year, and uh, we're now at the, the last lap, so to speak, which is uh, the Minister of Economic Development followed by the Prime Minister's office. Um, it's very hard to say how long it'll take, and uh, you know, but we estimate six to eight weeks. Oh, that's be excellent. Yeah. Um, so things are progressing very well on that project. Yes. And you're also doing a feasibility, I understand? Well, that'll be part of what we will uh, complete once we have all the, the license, uh, the permitting com completed. And I suppose, though, you've done sort of a back-of-the-envelope economic assessment within the company. Well, more than that, uh, we had a, to, to the, the stages of getting a mining license are, first of all, get the reserves approved. So in the West, it would be getting a 43-101 in Canada or a JORC under the Australian system, a JORC report, which is done by independent consultants. In Russia, it's done by the government. So they approved our reserves. And then we were granted a discovery certificate, which gives us the exclusive right to apply for the mining license. And then we applied for the mining license. So uh, to submit the original 
um, mining license application, we had to effectively do a feasibility study. And uh, it's, not, it's not a full bankable, but it's pretty, pretty detailed. So we had, a, we had a good handle on the costs and, and the development plan for the project. And so you currently have 2 million ounces that you've discovered on that project. And um, are you able to give us some idea of what potentially the net present value in IRR could be? Well, uh, as you know, uh, as, uh, the staff of a binding companies listed on the stock exchange aren't supposed to speculate on those matters. But, um, you know, there are, if you like, back of envelope versions that you can do, which are based on, you know, uh, in situ values which people use from time to time when they're assessing a project. And typically you might say that a, 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 an ounce of, of PGMs or an ounce of gold in the ground is worth somewhere between 10 and $50, $50 an ounce prior to mining license granting. So that's, you know, maybe you can do that exercise. <laughs> well, no, it's just somewhat helpful for investors yes. when they understand in valuating mm. your company, because mm. at this moment, sure. you're, you're... Well, um, exactly. I mean, we, there's no value attributed to the company yes. uh, for this project. Yes, because your market value right now is only 8 yeah, million pounds. Exactly. Yeah. And, here, and here you have a project that's um, ready to go towards production. That's right. Yeah. And so that's why I was yeah. asking the question. I know. Well, I, I'm not able to answer it any, <laughs> any clearer than that. No, so. no, no. That's good. Yeah. That is helpful. Yeah. And so I understand you're also looking at a blockchain prepayment um, type of deal. Yeah, uh, well, it's like you, you mentioned the, the general offtake uh, reviews that we've been doing, looking at options for that. Uh, the the uh, looking at a cryptocurrency solution to our uh, future platinum sales is another angle that we've investigated some detail. But we're not going to land on any of those until we're sure uh, how the mine will be developed, and that will then allow us to complete whatever plan that works out best. Yes, but it's very innovative thinking to, to go towards that type. Well, we'd like to think that we're, we've looked at as many options as possible. Excellent. And um, so then for the tailings project, Semenovsky, I believe, yes. um, what plans do you have for that project? Well, there it's very simple. We, we decided long ago that we weren't going to uh, use equity to finance that development. Um, and together with the owner, we are basically working on finding uh, a partner who would in some way contribute the capital investment cost in return for equity or profit share. And we're still working on that. Uh, but the, the key point is we're not going to... Um, issue shares to solve the problem. We want to find uh, finance from another another angle. Yes, well, well, considering management owns a very big chunk of shares, I'm sure you wouldn't want to dilute your current position. Yeah, we're a bit, we're a bit uh, paranoid about dilution, but um, at the same time, uh, all shareholders should be concerned that you want to get value for money if you're going to dilute the company. Yes, exactly. Yes. That makes sense. And um, if you potentially become free cash flow, um, would you look at um, paying a dividend to shareholders, maybe buying uh, back it's, shares? It's a bit down the track yet, you know, yes. but uh, basically it should be the ambition of any mining company to go there. Yes, exactly. Mm. And um, so that, this is very interesting. I suppose we have some news flow coming in the next few weeks with regard to getting your final permit. Um, potentially, uh, is there upgrading resources and reserves? Well, um, the, probably the important thing really is that we're, we'll be updating shareholders on production from the mine, and that'll be at the same time as we are re doing, releasing our annual results, which are due shortly. And uh, that's the immediate uh, prospect Excellent. in terms of news. Well, we look forward to hearing more about your expansion plans and your moving towards production and your news flow, keeping an eye on your share price. So hopefully it reflects all the assets that you have in the company. Thank you very much, Christian, for joining us. Thank you very much for joining us on ShareTalk.